I mean, it doesn't stop, you know? In your face, bombastic, bold, visionary. I've been saying for the last few years that there are only two cities to watch in the world regarding urbanism, two cities that are really taking a leadership role, showing us the way forward. Right now, it is Helsinki, and it is here in Paris, not Copenhagen. <laughs> it used to be Copenhagen, man. We were the shit back in the day. I filmed an episode of the Life Size City here back, I think, in 2015. So many amazing topics and citizens taking matters into their own hands, trying to make Paris a better city. But this city has had political will for a very long time. They had an amazing mayor for 12 years, Bertrand Delanoy. Now they have Annie Hidalgo. They have a mobility mayor, David Belliard. A group of people working for the city were trying to make Paris better. And it is like a non-stop thing. It's like almost every week something cool is happening. Small things. It's almost like a political strategy that we're going to do a whole bunch of small things as a part of a bigger picture to make it look like we are dynamic. And it works because you really feel how dynamic the development of this city is. And it is all life-size, man. People-centric. There are incredible details that you simply never hear about. Things that happen in, in neighborhoods out in the 20th arrondissement over, you know, down in the south. Small-scale things that have a massive effect on the future of this city. Pilot projects that achieve this kind of proof of concept so that they can roll it out across the city. And I am so looking forward to living here as I am now and exploring all of these things, man. It is nonstop rock and roll, urban development for the future of our cities and Paris is in the lead. In the episode of the Life Size City, I called this the Rebel Metropolis. This is where revolutions start, man. And the urban revolution for the future of our cities has really started here. And they are taking it very seriously. They are on the barricades. They are making this city better for the people who live here. They are inspiring the rest of us around the world to do all the right things. And a city this size, a city this renowned, this famous, that inspires all the other cities, all the big boys and girls around the table. Not just all of the the medium-sized cities and smaller cities where they say that it's easier to do things. Paris, man, they are taking the bull by the horns and they are just storming into the future and they're showing us the way. So let's follow. Let's have a look at all of the stuff that they're doing in this city. Let's be amazed by it. Let's copy paste it into every city in the world. There's one aspect of urban life here in Paris that really gets me excited about what is possible in cities here and everywhere else, man. This is a school street, big schools here, and it is completely closed off to cars, protecting the educational institution from the ravage of the automobile, providing kind of like a safe space right at the end of a kid's journey to school. There's a program from the city called uh, Rue aux Ecoles, like streets to the schools, bringing them back to the schools completely public space now. You don't have to wander far in Paris to imagine what this street used to look like with parking and narrow sidewalks. There is a gate so that the emergency services can get through. Beautiful idea, making the streets calm, traffic free in front of the educational institutions. I see it in many places around Paris, but it is not at all across the board. There's been some critics who have said that it's only on the streets that are low impact where, you know, it's an intervention and the neighbors are generally positive. It's not on many of the other streets where there are schools where it would impact a lot of parking and a lot of, uh, you know, car mobility, as it were. If there is a school where they don't have the possibility for closing motorbikes, oh. and if there is a school where it's not possible to close off the entire street, in front of the school, like this one, on the street where I live, then they do what they can to protect that space, calm the space, protect the children with these barriers. There's educational institutions on both sides. Also in front of some of the city halls, I've noticed, the local council city halls in the different arrondissements, they do it as well. Public space in front of important social institutions. That's pretty cool too. Paris still needs safe routes to schools. It's a densely populated city, most kids don't have you know, a long journey to get to the school, but come on, there's still so much work to be done getting them from the door of their home to their institution, not just a car-free space in front of the school. But man, they're doing it. They're doing it more than any other city in the world. I see in front of many schools where it's been closed off, like in the evenings, there's just kids skateboarding, playing football, really just using the public space. So this is one of the better examples. A lot of effort was put into designing this. This is something that 
every city in the world can learn from. Nice one, Paris. So if you're in Paris and you're wondering what things like this are, man, this is like a sidewalk, but there's a fence, right? This is a remnant of the pandemic. In Paris, this was one of the cities that really made some extra space for social distancing and they expanded the sidewalks. I was here during the pandemic a lot and there were plastic ballers here as a temporary solution. They are now making them permanent. They got really solid infrastructure. <clears throat> Motorbikes. Solid infrastructure. That means that they're going to make it permanent. When they get the budget, they're going to widen the sidewalks properly with a curb all the way out to this level here. So. This is one of the cities in the world that did a lot of temporary infrastructure because of the pandemic, but who are capitalizing on that opportunity and making it permanent. Two other cities that come to mind, Milan and Berlin. So you're gonna see some really awesome sidewalks along this stretch and other parts of Paris. I see them in many of the different uh, arrondissements. In a city with 3.2 million pedestrians a day, oh my God, it's a pretty good idea. Go Paris. So I'm just cycling around here with my friend Romain in the 20th arrondissement on a Sunday and a quiet residential street. And then all of a sudden you just ride past this. It's a dead end street, super local, and it has really been blinged up with a lot of cool greening, you know, wooden boxes, lots of plants, incredibly local feel. And this is something you see in Paris, man. Streets like this, but also just lots of temporary urbanism from the city, but also from the citizens. Just a planter on a street, on a side street, and busy streets too, man. An amazing little detail, this acupunctural urbanism. And you think, okay, wow, this is kind of nice. Must be just some really passionate neighbors here who got together, but then you look over here. <laughs> this is a map of all the uh, little private gardens, uh, the collectives uh, here, just in this arrondissement, the 20th. They're everywhere. They have little pictures of the people who live here. So many different things happening all the time. It's just, it, it's hard to keep up. And I will guarantee you, on a hot day in the summer, that the temperature on this street is five to 10 degrees cooler than it is just behind us, over on this really boring looking residential street here. There's literally no trees. They have some boxes here from the collective, but like there's nothing. Learning from the people who know how to do stuff, man. Let's get this, all these streets like this in Paris greener than ever before. Also because of climate change and rising temperatures. Paris, je t'aime. I'm in the heart of the 20th arrondissement in Paris. You come off the street and it just opens up into this amazing wild space with citizens just hanging out on a sunny Sunday in February. This is called Tep Terre d'Ecologie Populaire and it is basically a public park. But there were activists back in the day who fought against developers who wanted to put up a nine-story building on this huge plot of land. They occupied it and said, yeah, you know what? We're gonna plant some stuff. We're gonna make an urban garden. We're gonna create a collective here. So it is really wild to see how popular it is but also how big it is in the heart of Paris, prime real estate. And yet, the city has just said, fine, good idea. We don't need that building. We need an open space and one of this size for the people in this neighborhood, for the people of Paris. You see this a lot, you know, around the world, really cool urban gardens and citizens taking you know, affairs into their own hands. But this is the scale of this one is massive. And they defeated developers uh, and stopped the building from being built is even better for this story. So there's some things you don't like to see in cities and that's when they take away bike lanes. Have a look at this. That used to be a kind of a bike lane. It's gone now, but it's a good thing. Don't worry because they are removing car parking all the way up this street and they're planting loads of vegetation. They are tackling the arrogance of space here in Paris. And it continues. Things like this are not happening anywhere else in the world on this scale like they're happening in Paris regarding urbanism, man. 
hardcore urban change for the future of this city, for the citizens, you know, for the next couple hundred years. It is wild. One of the cliches about Paris that I have been hearing for decades is, oh, Paris is so dirty. It's so dirty. I don't think these people have been to New York. I have always been amazed for decades about how this city tries to keep itself clean. In this entire month that I've been here so far, I'm astounded at the service vehicles that are just patrolling the streets all day long. At night, they just hose down the street. <laughs> it's just a regular thing. This armada of vehicles that the city has at its disposal, but then this incredible army of people doing the hard work. I have absolutely the most utmost respect for them. I see them all day long, all hours of the day, man, and they are just working hard. This was a famous city for dog shit all over the sidewalk. I still see more dog shit on the sidewalks here uh, than I do in other cities, but man, that was an issue they had in the 80s and 90s, and that has been, they've tackled that one well. This is a clean city, and this is a role model for other cities around the world. I know I've probably said it before somewhere in this series, I think maybe in the intro as well, but this is really one of two cities to watch on the planet at the moment. The things that are happening here are just off the charts and they're not even finished with their work yet. I have been talking about for years when discussing speed limits in cities, I've been saying, you know what, like 85% of Paris is already a 30 kilometer an hour zone. Like, you know, we're still talking about it in Denmark. You know, you can't even do 30K zones. We can only do 40. So far behind on that front, man. But uh, Paris has been doing it for a very long time. Like, imagine 85% of a city this size somewhere else in the world where it's just 30 kilometers per hour, right? On the bigger streets, it's probably 50 or something, maybe 60, I'm not sure. But uh, calming down the city and doing so on that scale, it's amazing. You also have to talk about the 20K zones, man, because that is also a big part of Paris life, especially on residential streets. They have 138, what they call zone de rencontre, zone of meeting, just meeting on the street, kind of like a shared space thing, really quiet neighborhood street where pedestrians, kids playing have a priority, cars have to crawl along at a snail's pace, which they should be doing everywhere they are anyway. That is another cool thing about Paris. And so the next big plan on the way, I think it will be 2024 when they will complete it, is removing through traffic from the heart of Paris. There is this huge area of Paris that they call Paris Centre. It's like four arrondissements. There will be no through traffic through the heart of this city in 2024 if everything goes to plan. Uh, and a little bit on the other side of the river as well. The mobility mayor of Paris, David Belliard, he said, you know what, we want destination traffic. We don't want through traffic. If you live in the heart of Paris and you're still one of these really weird people who owns a car for whatever reason, um, you know, you're gonna be able to do so. Delivery vehicles, essential services, you know, your, your plumber and everything, they'll be able to get in, but what people won't be able to bomb through. They're gonna have to go out to the motorway all the way around. That's why it was built in the 50s for these people. You go out to the motorway, you go all the way around to come into the other side of Paris. That is a massive project. Again, like I've never seen anywhere else in the world. Paris has also been building bike lanes for many years, slowly but surely. They don't really know what best practice is just yet. They have weird mixes of infrastructure typologies, but they're building it, they're taking away the space. They have a vision for Paris as a bicycle-friendly city. The mayor, for all of the amazing work she's been doing in urbanism, she also said in 2014 that this will be the best city for bikes by 2020. It's now 2023, it hasn't happened, but I have seen the growth over the past 15, 20 years in this city, and it is growth you haven't seen anywhere else. You have neighborhoods in Paris here where the modal share for bikes is easily over 20%. The city as a whole, it's about three and a half, four percent, but man, neighborhood-wise, it really rocks. This year alone, 2023, they're planning 45 kilometers of new bike lanes, and certainly not many cities in the world who tackled the pandemic by putting in temporary bike lanes as much as the city of Paris did, and now they are making them permanent as well. So the whole bicycle urbanism development in the city is a whole different chapter, but it is also something worth talking about. So this is really uh, one of the parts of Paris that is iconic in a modern context. This was the Georges Pompidou Expressway 
1960s infrastructure man just blowing down the river, occupying the space, prime real estate right along the river, like so many other cities have done. Now, if we're talking about the curve in the modernization of our cities, Paris has been ahead of it for a very long time, thanks to a long stretch of political will, right? This section, back in 2002, very few things were happening that were interesting in 2002. They closed it off from the end of July to the beginning of September. So really the month of August when most people in Paris just vacate the city and go off on holiday. So they said, oh, let's make a beach, Paris Plage, Paris Beach. And they put out all sorts of bling. It was a massive effort. They had sand trucked in from Normandy. So they really made a beach. I don't come here a lot. You know, I think there's other places uh, that are more interesting for me personally, but it is incredibly popular in the summer. And during, on a day like this, in the middle of the week, you know, there's it's winter, right? It's February, lots of people running, people riding bikes, going for walks, right? Amazing public space. Oh, it is so fantastic. Then, in 2016, the mayor of Paris and Hidalgo, she said, you know what? This is really cool, but never mind the one month, we're making it permanent. We're gonna close this expressway off and we are just gonna make public space. What you hear a lot coming out of the politicians in Paris is an incredibly strong, in-your-face narrative, and I love it. <laughs> they say things that most other politicians that we all know wouldn't even dare to say. So she talked about this as the reconquest of the Seine. We are taking back this space that has been stolen from us. This kind of thing, right? And she's also said stuff like, owning a private car in a city is so archaic. Oh, this is a woman after my own heart, absolutely. And she follows up on her vision, on her promises. This is now completely permanent public space for about three kilometers. In other parts of Paris, they've added to this idea of the Paris beach, the Paris Plage. Uh, there's about seven kilometers in all along the river and the canal. That is one thing that Paris is amazing at. The respect for public space, the desire to transform it and modernize it from the car-centric chaos we had before into something that is simply nice for people. Back in the day, it's hard to imagine now, it's so quiet. It's one of the quietest places we've been filming so far. There were 40,000 cars a day on this expressway. It was insane, right? And uh, that was really indicative of all of Paris. But this is just completely a calm, nice space next to the water, like every city with waterways should be. There were fears back then, that, you know, from all the car lobby and the motorists. Oh yeah, you're just gonna paralyze Paris with traffic. All the cars that cannot be here, they will go somewhere else. Never happened. And it never happens anywhere in the world where we do stuff like this in urbanism. Half the cars just disappeared, like from Paris, right? People found other alternatives. You make driving a car difficult, a real pain in the ass. Time-wise, money-wise, convenience-wise, people choose other forms of transport. There's no carrot and stick. There's only the biggest stick in the history of our cities. That's what we need to employ across the board around the world. <laughs> And here in Paris, it doesn't stop at a massive project like this. There are other ones on the way. One of them is creating four urban forests in the heart of Paris. One of them right around the iconic city hall, just up the road from here. I've seen the renderings. It looks amazing. Let's hope that the renderings actually transfer into reality, which is not all often the case with landscape architecture and architecture. But huge urban forests to cool down the city to fight pollution to provide biodiversity as well. Then there's the Champs-Élysées. Very few streets of the world are as famous, as renowned, as iconic as the Champs-Élysées. This is where people celebrate winning the World Cup. This is all the major events that people want to gather together and celebrate. This is it. This is where you go. Uh, nobody I know in Paris goes to the Champs-Élysées. Like, literally. I had an exhibition at the Danish Cultural Center, Le Micolo, which is right here. My, my friends are going, oh, I don't really go to the Champs-Élysées, and I'm going, but come to my exhibition, like, make an exception. <laughs> it's literally hated by all the Parisians I know. It's tourists, it's high-end shops, it's Dior and Hugo Boss and Gucci and everything like that, man. So yeah, not an attractive place. You can also hear why. Insane amount of traffic, always been like this. Uh, huge military-style boulevard built back in the day for pomp and circumstance, but uh, 
Now it's just a nightmare. Huge plans for transformation of the Champs Elysees from the mayor of Paris. It's a bit tricky, this one, because it's administered by the city and the state. It's, it's so important that everybody wants a piece of this. So the negotiations for doing a massive modernization of this street, more trees, less cars, better bike lanes, has been a long process. So hopefully, what I've read is 2030, it'll be done by, uh, so not in time for the Olympics, but it's about time, man. Make this street something that all the Parisians like and not just the, the tourists who come up to see the Arc de Triomphe. Place du Concorde, which is down the river here, they are going to do this huge transformation. They're hoping to be finished with that in time for the Olympic Games in 2024. I mean, it doesn't stop, you know? It's not, there's all this acupuncture urbanism here, all these small scale things, uh, really citizen focused in the neighborhoods. And then you just have this grand scheme to completely transform this city and modernize it and future proof it for the next 100, 200 years, hopefully even longer, man. In your face, bombastic, bold, visionary. Yeah, the Peripherique, old school monster infrastructure, man, surrounding the city. It actually runs along the same lines as the old fortifications of Paris, and it still is this massive barrier, mental as well, separating Paris from outer Paris, the Grand Paris. Look at that, it's like so old school. It's like going back in a time machine and seeing what it was like to be, you know, my dad in the 50s. <laughs> Damn, insane. But they are trying to connect a ring of tramways inside the Peripherique all the way around Paris to provide this kind of missing link in the transport network. This is the last section and I think we can assume that because this is an incredibly wealthy neighborhood on this side of Paris in the west, all the embassies are over here, big fancy people. It's been a bit tough to get them to agree to this, right? Um, but it's happening. Up on the intersection there, they are building it and that is a really cool thing. So the Peripherique is largely exposed for most of its length, but then you come here, driving along into the rich neighborhood where fancy people have influence and had influence back in the day. Can you see it? Here. Half of the motorway on the side of the fancy neighborhood is covered. And then it kind of comes out, I think, not far down, but then it goes underground again. The only part of the Peripherique when it was built that was covered was in the rich neighborhood. We don't want to bother them with noise and pollution now, do we? No, everybody else can suffer that in the rest of Paris. But now a tramway's coming. Maybe we'll have some first movers from the SUV crowd who will be saying, ooh, the tram, nice. And maybe a bike share. <laughs> optimist, always an optimist. So many cities in the world, they close off the streets to cars, open them up to everybody else. Paris is famous as well for that at the Champs-Élysées. Uh, the motorbike uh, on the Champs Elysees in Paris. You've seen all the photos in the news. Beautiful streets filled with people riding bikes, walking, rollerblading, whatever. And they have a name for it, of course. Paris respire. Paris breathes on these days. But I remember being here 15 years ago, walking through this neighborhood, the Marais, and uh, there was a sign. Roads were closed, and we were trying to figure out what the hell was going on. So this is not a new thing. You talk about being ahead of the curve, man. Paris has been shutting off the streets in large parts of the heart of the city for 15 years, at least so many years, and so many cities have had time to follow, but they haven't yet. Walking around this neighborhood on a Sunday, music on the streets, people just meandering back and forth. That is really such a cool part of Paris life, and it has been for a while. It's super cold and windy in Paris, so it might be a little bit windy on the microphone. But hey, big shout out to Paris for being a city that really embraces urban skateboarding. I've met some skateboarders for a podcast that I made, link in the description about skateboard urbanism. And if you're a young skateboarder, really anywhere in the world, this is one of your meccas right here. Skating on Republic. This end of it, completely redesigned for skateboarding. All the features on this part of the square are designed to enable skateboarders to take part in public space. Instead of being shoved under a motorway somewhere, oh, we made a little skate park for you, buddy, go there. Very few cities do that, take that very seriously. Skateboarding, man, for the world.
so many different things happening all the time. It is like a non-stop thing. Nice one, Paris. Oh, it is so fantastic. It's just, it's hard to keep up. The things that are happening here are just off the charts. Non-stop, rock and roll. I mean, it doesn't stop, you know? Go Paris. In your face, bombastic, bold, visionary. Paris, je t'aime. Thank you.